welcome to the third video of my koi breeding series. Uh, today I'll be updating you on the koi uh, they're breeding and also changing out the pair. And also, just before I start, I've got some pretty pretty exciting thing to show you. So let's go through that now. As you can see, they're a tiny fish. Right there. So what you saw there was my goldfish babies, basically, a week ago. I put, I think it was about five goldfish in there, and they laid eggs. And first, I thought that it was an unsuccessful breeding because the eggs all went a bit bad. And I sort of wrote it off, but I left it there, just in the chance they might hatch. And a week later, got quite a few in there. I mean, it's only about 100 because most of them were unfertile. But I still have plenty now, so hopefully have some nice super pumpkin babies, but now, back on to the main topic of this video. Today, I'm going to be updating you on the koi breeding. Um, as you can see, there's been a few changes since the last video I made on it. The blue spawning mat has gone. I've replaced it with those spawning like, mop heads over there. We've got a UV filter running on this now. There. That's running. And the water's a bit green, but that's okay. That's only because of the events. There's a lot of sunlight recently. So that isn't actually bad for the fish, it's just there's a lot of, it's just green due to the sun and that'll create like algae, but there's not, that's not much of a problem. But also I've moved the aerators a bit as well, they all moved around. But, something I didn't mention in my last video on how to breed koi is that if they haven't bred within four days, you need to switch the breeding pairs because that means they're just not, they don't want to breed. So today, I'm going to be switching out the fish. So I'll be ta I'll keep the two males in here, but I'm going to take out the two females that are in here. So I'm going to do that now. And I'll come back to you once I've done that. And if you're wondering why you don't you switch them out after four days, that is because they haven't bred yet, which means they're not ready to breed, and it doesn't do them any harm. If you don't have any other females, you just take them out. There's no point leaving them in the spawning pond because that's just not good for them, and it won't stimulate them when they get put in there. But just take them out, leave it for a bit. We've only got one female, and then put them back in maybe a week later. But yeah, let's go fill up this uh, bucket first, and let's do that, and then I'll get the females. So now that it's filled up, let's get the fish. Oh wait, we're going. Oh, <laughs> stop that. Okay. So now we put the fish back in the pond uh, for about a week and see if anything happens, and then we'll put them back in afterwards. Here's one of the males. Here's another male. And here's the two females. And then the final female. Yeah, and then on the back and early them for a week.
Hello and welcome back. Um, it is a week later. Mm, that's primarily because I had a lot going on. Obviously, I've got the fish from Cotterbrook now. It just came in. I was just waiting for that to come in. It, they only were delivering on certain days, so I had to wait a while. I didn't, there was nothing else to record on, and I didn't want to post a video to, it was too short because that would just be too boring. So I have a lot to catch you up on, basically. So let's start doing that now. So I'll be do, trying to do a, quite a few things today. So let's do that now. First off, the breeding tank now looks like this. It is crystal clear. And when I say crystal clear, I mean if I turned off all this aeration so it was less, um, sort of less bubbles, it would be like you could, yeah, it's, it's crystal clear as water can possibly get. Obviously the brushes, as you can see, are not in here. Um, that's because I took them out of the tank, you know, I'll just leave them in the water. These are still in here. I had to give them a little bit of a rinse. But also, it's primarily because the filter running the UV. Uh, a lot of oxygen in here, very, like there's four very large air stones, plus the plunge of the water. But the first thing I'm going to do today is re-secure the brushes back in here, back where they were, the tape, so I've got the tape, the bailing twire and the cutters and all that. So that'll be my first task, and then after that I'm going to be moving a very large 60 centimetre koi fish, the new female that came from Clutterbrook, with my two males and moving them in here to see, leave them for another four days and see if anything happens. But this fish, I mean, is very large. So we're gonna try and attempt to catch that today. But first of all, get these brushes in here. So first, I just need to stringed up there there and there so we're gonna put them in the water and then take them up that's the plan see how it goes <laughs> So I put the fish in the tub and they're just swimming around now. I'm going to see them okay. The female is the, the large white metallic boy and the male is just the two smaller ones. They're very happy in here, this water quality is very nice. I bet it, I put a few fish in here obviously in my previous videos but that also didn't work out. And this fish here is one from Cutterbrook Koi Farm. I to wait for that to be delivered but As you can see, they're just sort of settling in. Got the brushes. If you're wondering um, why this is foam on top, this is just so that they float. If I show you the bottom, it's just sort of plugged in to the bottom of it. That's just so they float. There's four air stones, a filter obviously, and it just sort of, yes, very nice. But I need to do a water change soon, which I'll do tomorrow. I've sort of run out of time today. But yeah, as you can see, they're just sort of swimming around, getting used to the environment. This will take them a few days. I'll get used to it. As you can see, the males are also showing interest. The way they're swimming next to her. If they're not showing interest, they wouldn't do that. Um, well, they would, but they would more sort of, sort of, um, sort of not be swimming near her. Uh, as you can see at the moment, they're not always next to her, but that's also just because they're trying to adjust. They're just been moved, so they're not going to be paying attention to her straight away. You want to give them a day or so. Don't rush it. As I said in my previous video, you don't want to leave them in here for any more than five, four days because otherwise, when it's happening after that sort of span of time, like a week at maximum, but if it's happening after that sort of time, 
there's no point leaving them in there, you want to get them back in the main pond and back to their regular life. But luckily for me, I can come here and check them in the evening because obviously quite spawn in the evening and it'll be much easier. But if you if you have got obviously a smaller guardian, see I have a very large area here to sort of do it. But if you have got a small guardian, you can do it in a much smaller setup just because these fish are much larger. You could probably do it in just a small paddling pool, really. But that's only if... I would not recommend you try and breed unless you've been, been looking after poi successfully for a good amount of time. Because it is very hit and miss. You could lose all your fry. You've got to get... It's just very technical. They're not... Fry very hard to do. Like, the easiest part is breeding the koi. The hardest part is caring for the fry. And I, I do, this is my first time, so I'm... I highly expect them to only even get like five koi out of the breeding but it's more for the experience but I would not recommend you try breeding until you're 100% sure you've got everything right and you've cared for koi for long enough don't just like oh think oh I'll go and get a bunch of males and females and just chuck them in and breed them that's just no it's just not going to work you need to make sure that you know what you're doing and I also did my research for a few months before and I had a look around make sure I got exactly what I need and yeah, if it goes well, it goes well. It's really great. And you can see, sell the coin, make good profit off of it. It's definitely, if it goes well, it's good. It's just, it's not, don't always get your hopes up. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, I think that will finish off today's video. I will probably upload sometime again this week. To just I'll give you an update if anything happens. If nothing happens, I probably won't see you until next week. But if something does happen, I'll probably be with you soon. Anyway. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you next time.